now that we see the similarity or the relatedness between domain adaptation and GANs, maybe we can borrow ideas from the GANs literature and make domain adaptation better and better. We learned about cycle consistency when we were covering conditional GANs. We can borrow those, those ideas and bring them to the literature on domain adaptation. And this is exactly this, what this paper is doing. And we saw two competing methods of uh, doing domain adaptation. One was comparing images at the feature level. The other one was comparing images at the pixel level. One of them was generative, the other ones were sort of discriminative. The last function was still a mean max type of loss or a GAN type of loss, regardless of whether you are comparing images at the pixel level or the feature level. Now we are trying to com combine the two and borrow some ideas from cycle consistency to do unsupervised domain adaptation. Just to recap, you have source data, you have source labels, you have target data, you have no target labels. This is unsupervised domain adaptation. XS, YS are pairs of simulated data. XT are the real data. In the end, you want to find a classifier on top of XT. One option is ignore the target data altogether, train a classifier on the source data using your usual cross-entropy loss. And this is the way that you're going to be training FS, the feature extractor on your source data. This sigma here is not sigmoid, it's actually a softmax function. It's gonna output a vector or a probability distribution. And then this one hot vector is gonna pick out the corresponding entry of that vector. And you know xs, you know ys, you can train this. What's gonna happen? If you take fs evaluated on your target data, it's gonna do a very poor job because your target data is different from your source data. There is domain shift. This figure has a lot in it, so I need to break it apart. Let's start with the things that we know, our data. This is a source image. If you look at it, this is a rendered image. This is not a real image. This is an image from a gaming environment. This data we have, this is a source image. What else do we have? We have the corresponding source label. So this image here, this other image here, we have them. We are doing semantic segmentation, which you can think of it as per pixel classification. You are classifying every single pixel in that image. This is a car, color it with a blue. This is the road, color it with magenta, etc. This data you have, this other data you have. Now you want to do domain adaptation. What other type of data you have? You have your target images. These are real images from real roads and real cars and real human beings. Okay, so you have your source label, source image, target image. And at the end of the day, you want to have a classifier on your target images or your semantic segmentation. Do your semantic segmentation on the real world. Okay, so far so good. We saw that you can take a source image, translate it into a target image or a fake target image using a generator. How are you gonna train this? This is happening at the pixel level. You're gonna borrow ideas from GANs. You're gonna put a discriminator, discriminating between fake target images and real target images. That's gonna give you a GAN loss. That is not only gonna train your discriminator, but is also gonna train your generator, okay? So, so now you have a mapping, and this is exactly what we did in the previous slide. Okay, perfect. What else did we do in the previous slide? We put a target classifier, or a target feature extractor and on top of that a classifier, which is gonna take one of these images, fake target images, and then it's gonna classify it. This is the prediction of the model for this image. This is the ground truth. We can write down your task loss, and then you can train F of T. So far, it is exactly what we did in the previous slide. And this is whenever you are doing mapping between unpaired images, and you are operating at the pixel level. You can also operate at the representation level. What do I mean? Take the fake target image, featureize it. Take the target image, featureize it. These features should not give away information whether this is a fake target featureized image or is it a real target featureized image. So these features that are gonna come out, they need to be 
uh, they don't need to, they shouldn't give away information about being fake or real at the feature level. And this, this is not happening at the pixel level, this is happening at the feature space level. And this also we saw before with a modification. Previously here you were putting in source images, now you're putting in translated source images. Not only that, you want things to be consistent, cycle consistent. If you take the source image, stylized as a target image, if you take that, you generate an image from the source domain. Basically, you take your source domain, go to the target domain, and then come back. Things need to be consistent. It needs to be the same image. This is at the pixel level, consistency at the pixel level. And this we saw before when we were doing cycle consistent GANs. There is also another one. Things need to be consistent at the feature level. What do I mean? The source image and the target image, the fake target image, they need to be classified the same. For a pixel in this domain, in this image, a pixel in the other image, they need to be classified as the same thing. You don't want uh, the concept to change. You don't want your labels to flip. Suddenly this pixel turn into a tree rather than it being a truck. And if you remember, we pre-trained FS using this last function. We can take these two images, push them through FS, and they need to classify pixels the same. And this one, I need to give you the exact formula for the last function. Let's see the math. We do pixel level adaptation. You have a neural network GS, G from S to T, source to target. The way that you're gonna train that is using a discriminator and the corresponding GAN loss, which is the usual GAN loss, discriminating between real target and fake target images. You have a task loss, which is coming from semantic segmentation type of loss, per pixel prediction or per pixel classification. And as I mentioned, even after all of these loss functions, there is no guarantee that this mapping is going to preserve the structure at the pixel level and the content at the concept level. This is a truck, that's a car. There is no guarantee for that happening. Therefore, you have these extra loss functions. One of them is going backward to give us the cycle consistency. The other one is preserving the content. If I go from source to target and come back, I need to get the same image. If I go from target to source and then come back to the target domain, I need to have the same uh, structure for my image. This is preserving the structure now, the content. And at the same time, you want to preserve the meaning of the pixels that you don't suddenly get labeled flipping, the car being classified as a tree. And this is where semantic consistency or uh, concept consistency is going to come in. What do you have? You took a source image, you translated it into a target image, a fake target image. You push it through your classifier. That's going to give you some classes. This is what this P is doing in addition to your FS. The same thing if you take a target image, go to the source image, and then uh, it needs to give you the same concept. This is your classifier in the end, which is basically arc max of your probability distribution, the maximum location of the probabilities. And then you're going to write down that loss function, which is basically the loss of your task, which is classification, per pixel classification. And what are the corresponding labels for it? The corresponding labels are coming from the predicted label. So there is no gradients on top of this. The only gradients are going to be on top of G from T to S and from G taking you from S to T. P is just giving you the corresponding labels and things need to be consistent. A target image, if you push it through a classifier, it needs to have the same labels if you take your target image translate it into, into the source domain, and then push it through your classifier. It needs to give you the same labels. And then in terms of the feature level adaptation, this piece of loss function here, it's the usual GAN type of loss. Your complete objective function is all of these together. You train your discriminator, generators, and then your task neural network. And then you can do your translation from street view, house numbers to MNIST, and there are some other results for semantic segmentation in the paper. And this one is doing the best, and it should because you put a lot of effort into the framework and you are getting closer and closer to 
and Oracle being trained on a lot of data in the target domain. I think I'm going to stop here. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around.